continuing with the body of the for loop that began in the upper right of your screen, the code in the lower right of your screen uses a modulus operator in conjunction with the loop counter to compute the column number for each pixel object whose reference is stored in the one-dimensional array of pixel objects. Having determined the column number in which each pixel is located, the last two statements in the code on the bottom right of your screen compute the green and blue scale factors that are necessary to satisfy the algorithm. I will leave it as an exercise for the student to think about how the two equations shown in the bottom right of your screen cause the two scale factors to vary linearly from left to right across the image in accordance with the requirements of the algorithm. If that isn't quickly obvious to you, that probably means that you need to dust off your high school algebra book. I do want to point out that in both cases, on the bottom right of your screen, it was necessary for me to cast the numerator of the fraction to type double to avoid having the program do an integer divide. The problem with an integer divide is that it throws away the fractional part preventing the scale factor from having a decimal part. In order to get good results, I needed scale factors that varied uniformly from 0 to 1.0. The pixel class contains methods named set red, set green, and set blue. These methods can be called to set the color values for the pixel represented by a pixel object. The green and the blue color values for each pixel were saved in listing 4 on the top right portion of your screen. The code in listing 6 on the bottom right portion of your screen applies the scale factors computed in the middle right portion of your screen to the green and blue color values and passes those modified colors to the set to the set green and set blue methods of the current pixel object. This causes the green and blue color values to be modified according to the algorithm that was specified earlier. Stated differently, the new color values that are set on the bottom right portion of your screen are based on the existing color values that were, retrieved, that were retrieved in the upper right portion of your screen and the scale factors that were computed in the middle right portion of your screen. The new color values are stored in the pixel by calling the set green and set blue methods on the current pixel 
object. The code in the bottom right portion of your screen also signals the end of the for loop that began at the top right portion of your screen. Finally, the code in listing 7 in the top right portion of your screen calls the explore method on the reference to the picture object. This produces a picture explorer object that encapsulates the current state of the picture object and that picture explorer object is shown in the bottom right portion of your screen. Listing 7 also signals the end of the run method and the end of the class name prob03runner. As such, Listing 7 signals the end of the program. If you examine the image shown on the bottom right of your screen, you will see that there is a wealth of green color on the left side and a wealth of blue color on the right side. This is what you would expect for the algorithm that was specified earlier. When the run method in the upper right portion of your screen terminates, control is returned to the main method causing the highlighted statement to execute. This statement calls a getter method named getPicture to get a reference to the picture object. That reference is passed to the print line method which displays information about the picture object as shown by the last line of text in figure 3 at the bottom right of your screen. At this point, the main method would like to terminate and return control to the operating system. However, the program is not allowed to terminate for as long as the images shown on the right hand side of your screen continue to appear on your screen. When the user clicks the X in the upper right hand corner of these images and causes them to go away, the main method will finally terminate and return control to the operating system. In this lesson, you learned how to implement a color modification algorithm that varies linearly from left to right across the image that is encapsulated in a picture object. That concludes lecture number three, titled Implementing a Spacewise Linear Color Modification Algorithm, in which you learned how to implement a color modification algorithm that varies linearly from left to right across the image that is encapsulated in an object of the class named picture. You will find more information on these topics on my website at www.dickbaldwin.com.